Well, from fashion to food, we feature a lot of healthy and plant-based recipes here on New Day, but today we have something special for all you meat eaters out there. Julia Colin Davison from America's Test Kitchen showed me how to make a one-pan dinner that is a steak lover's dream. Yeah, today we're making a, a coffee spice rub steak with sweet potatoes and scallions. And I think the scallions is a really interesting part of this recipe because most people think of this as an herb or a garnish, but it's a vegetable. You can eat it like a vegetable, like you would a leek. And we're taking advantage of that in this sheet pan recipe, which I'm way into sheet pans. Uh, you can sound British if you want and call it a tray bake. Oh. So also note, yes, yes. You know, for those fancy Wednesdays, you're having a tray bake. I'm having but a tray bake. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is just cooking everything on one pan so there's minimal cleanup and it's just easy. Uh, and we're going to start off with the sweet potatoes. Now I have them in the oven and you can see they we gave them a bit of a head start. These are just sweet potatoes that we cut lengthwise into okay. wedges and they get about a half an hour start in the oven. Now I'm going to keep this warm in the oven. So I did that first. And now we're gonna focus on the steak. You can either use a New York strip or a ribeye. I like the New York strip with this because it cooks through really evenly in the oven. And we're just gonna make a simple spice rub. So I'm gonna combine a little bit of brown sugar. It's two tablespoons of brown sugar. And that will help not only with flavor, but really browning, because you need to get that browning in the oven, which can be tricky. So that'll really help. Yeah. A little bit of chili powder, salt and pepper. And last but not least, the secret ingredient, this is two tablespoons of finely ground coffee. So, finely ground coffee? Yeah, just coffee beans. Like instead of grinding it and putting it in your coffee maker, grind it really fine and put it in your spice rub. And it just adds a savory, unique flavor. And I grew up with my uncle throwing coffee into his chili. So I'm kind of familiar with that coffee beef flavor. And it's lovely. Yeah, we're gonna put a pin in the coffee and the chili because I wanna talk to you about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a ATK has your motto is turning curious cooks into confident cooks as since 1993. Tell yep. us a little more about ATK and what, what goes on. Yeah, so America's Test Kitchen, we are located in downtown Boston. We have a huge test kitchen, over 40 test cooks. We uh, develop recipes for two magazines, Cooks Illustrated and Cooks Country. Uh, we have two television shows on public television, uh, and that's America's Test Kitchen and Cooks Country. America's Test Kitchen is the longest running cooking show on TV. Um, and we also produce a ton of cookbooks. Uh, and the, our whole idea behind our approach is we don't take any advertising in the magazines yeah. and that's why we're on public television uh, and it allows us to really say what we think about products so we test kitchen equipment we taste test products like canned tomatoes and chicken broth so mm -hmm. that we tell you what works best and why um, and then for our recipe development we pretty much use a scientific method if you think about it that way where we'll test a bunch of things and come up with a working recipe but then test the variables independent of one another to figure out again, what works and why. And it, so by the time we're done, uh, the recipes are really well vetted. And before we publish anything, we send the recipes out to our over 70,000 home cook testers who make their recipes on their own time, their own done, and tell us if it works for them or not. Because you know, in the test kitchen, we have people doing the shopping, we have people doing the dishes. It is, um, over wow. 20,000. Yeah, it's a lot of square footage. It's a lot of people, but we can make anything work, right? In the test kitchen. But the value of a good recipe is whether people at home can make it. And so that's how we test it. We ask people at home to make it for us. I love and it. So I love watching you clean up and keep everything neat and tidy when cooking because that is so key. Um, oh. So once you've got the steaks all seasoned, Yep, so now I'm gonna pull these sweet potatoes out. And this pan is hot, right? So you're gonna hear that sizzle as the steaks go on. Ooh. So they're, yeah, and then these scallions are gonna go right on top of the sweet potatoes. You just throw them on there? Just throw them on there. And it, it's gonna add a little moisture to the sweet potatoes and these are gonna roast. Pop this back in the oven. And this is a hot oven. This is a 450 degree oven. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, uh, it's ripping hot in there and the steaks will take about 15 minutes. Um, you know your steak's done when it registers 120 to 125 degrees. I'm holding up my wind, my favorite thermometer of all times. This is a thermopen. Okay. But really, an instant read thermometer, having one and using one will turn any mediocre cook into a terrific cook because it allows you to know when things are done. And as long as you know some basic temperatures like steak for medium rare, 
is 120 to 125. Chicken is 160 if it's white meat, 170 if it's dark meat. Salmon is 125. And once you know those temperatures and you start using this, your food will be properly done and it'll taste so much better. So this is the one takeaway I really uh, want cooks to think about if they don't use a thermometer. I didn't have a digital thermometer until just recently. I had one of those I got from the health department. That, uh -huh. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> okay, that looks beautiful. And I have to say yes. the tray bake is so great. The, the, is it the tray bake? It's, it's wonderful. Tray bake. When you got two kids, a full-time job, because I don't have time for that. And that's what I love about your one pot. Uh, yes. Book. Yeah. So in our one pot book, we have a ton of tray bakes for everything from chicken to fish, vegetarian things. We also have skillet meals. We have Dutch oven meals, Instapot meals, lots of pastas. And some of my favorite pastas, you have the pasta raw. You don't have to cook the pasta separately and then make a casserole. You can cook the raw pasta in the casserole and that just saves time. So many good ideas. Yeah, and it's this kind of weekday cooking that I think most of us are struggling with because we're not going out to restaurants much anymore. And yeah. so it's just that, that sort of at the last minute you need dinner and here you go, it's one pot. Voila, well you can find the recipe for Julia's coffee and chili rubbed steaks at NewDayNorthwest.com. And coming up next, we're going from steak to true crime. Up next, the ladies from the Scene of the Crime podcast join me for a new round of Hot Topics. And then later in the show, are you prepared for the next natural disaster? We're getting expert advice on how to get ready back after this.